I hope that Ode to Joy Part 1 has gone well for you so far. Again, it takes a long time to practice to be able to make it steady. So don't worry if you have some notes that sound a little bit not quite coming out consistently. Um, getting to that D is hard, isn't it? That third fret on the second string, that's going to be your hardest note. Don't worry about these things. Practice them. Take it a line at a time, maybe even a measure at a time, and, um, and you will get it. I'm going to continue using my pick for part two of Ode to Joy, but again, if you are more comfortable using your fingers, that is great. From my experience, about three quarters of people are more comfortable using their fingers at first. I certainly was. I pretty much just used fingers when I started playing probably the first six months that I played. I just used fingers, and then later on, I had to really work on my pick technique. And about a quarter of people are more comfortable with the pick right away. So. Uh, because we're thinking more about our left hand, I would encourage you to do whatever you're the most comfortable with with your right hand right now. Now look through the music here for Ode to Joy. I'm looking at it myself, part two. Uh, something I didn't mention in part one is I do have the fret numbers written in for the notes and the note names, just like in our natural scale. So I hope that's clear and I hope you can see those connections between that first half of the natural scale that we learned and Ode to Joy, part one, and now part two. Uh, we should have the music up here. You can see if you look in the second measure, remember that the measure is what's dividing the music with those vertical bar lines. You can see that there is a, a couple of notes up on top that are beamed together. They're called eighth notes, which you may or may not be familiar with, and they are faster. If you remember, there are four beats in every measure. Well, there's five notes in that measure, in that second measure of Ode to Joy Part Two. How does that work? Well, those two eighth notes are faster and two of them go inside one beat. I'm gonna play just that measure for you, okay? Just measure two on part two of Ode to Joy. It will sound like this. Ready, play. You see how that second beat had two notes in it that were quicker. Ta, 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 ta. Still four beats in the measure, all right? So I'm gonna play all of part two for you now. And a little, if, if you're thinking, oh, this is a lot of music, I just want to encourage you that the first two lines of this are different. It's new music. It's actually my favorite part of the song. But the bottom two lines are actually back to familiar territory from part one. Okay, so hopefully that'll encourage you a little bit if this seems like a lot of notes. So I'm going to play Ode to Joy part two for you right now. Make sure you can see my guitar. And... By the way, I didn't mention this in the other one, but whenever we start playing, I will typically say, ready, play, and then that next beat is when we're gonna start. So let's try that right now. You don't have to play with me, but just kind of understanding how that works. You can kind of think through it that way. Ready, play. how Beethoven wrote it, almost. <laughs> so you may have also heard that in measure four, that is measure two of the second line, when I got to that open G string, that third string G, the lowest note in this song, I held it for two beats, didn't I? So that's another way that we can still have four beats in the measure, but notes change their length. All right, so uh, good luck practicing Ode to Joy part two, part one and part two. And in our next video, I am going to do a play along video where I strum chords and play the melody and you can play along with me, okay? Good luck practicing your Beethoven. Who would have thought we would be learning Beethoven right off the bat? <laughs>